When we're analyzing a mass spec, the most important thing is that we pay attention to the M plus peak as well as an M plus two peak if it's present. Sometimes it is useful for us to also analyze the gaps or the distances between prominent peaks on the mass spec as well as gaps between the M plus peak and other prominent peaks. This is referred to as analyzing the gaps or analyzing the fragments of a mass spec. And I'm going to teach you how to do that with this mass spec for 2-methylbutane. I'm going to begin by just drawing that molecule so that we have it for reference. There's 2-methylbutane. And when we're doing this sort of analysis where we're looking at the gaps or the fragments, it's really helpful for us to actually assign number values to the most prominent peaks in the spectrum. To do this, what I'm doing is, first of all, I'm going to find and uh, assign value to the M plus peak. It is at 72. I'm also going to be looking at clusters of peaks, like here I have a little cluster of peaks, and I'm just going to focus on the most abundant or the most prominent peak within that cluster. That peak looks like it is at 55, 57. And then I have another cluster of peaks right here. And again, I'm just going to focus on the peak that is the most prominent. And that one is 41, 42, 43. And then I've got another cluster over here. It looks like I've got two pretty, pretty prominent peaks in this area. This is 26, 27, and then also 29. And then I've got this one little peak down here at 15. So I'm not paying attention to every single individual peak, but just the most prominent peaks within the different clusters that we have. So each one of these peaks represents a fragment of the molecule, uh, like the molecule broke in half at some point, like maybe this bond broke right here and the mass spec detected just this piece right there or something along those lines. We can get some information about the carbon skeleton by looking at the gaps in between these prominent peaks. Also by looking at the distances or the gaps between our M plus peak and these prominent peaks as well. So after we've identified the values of each one of these prominent peaks, the next thing that we want to do is look at the difference in mass between these these each one of these peaks. So for example, between 57 and 72, the gap there is 15. 72 minus 15 is 57. And then we want to think about what fragment or what chunk of a molecule corresponds to a mass of 15. This is actually a pretty common fragment because it corresponds to a methyl group. So we can make an assumption that the difference between the entire molecule and this pretty significant peak right here that just represents losing a, a methyl group. Likewise, this chunk over here, 15, this most likely corresponds to a methyl group as well. Um, let's take a look at another gap. We have another gap right here, 43 minus 57, uh, other way around, 57 minus 43. That corresponds to 14. Um, that looks like that could be due to the loss of a CH2. So if we have a gap of 14, that most likely corresponds to a CH2. And we could also take a look at this gap right here, the difference between 72 and 43. That's going to correspond to a, a fragment of 29, 29 is the math mass of an ethyl group, CH2CH3. So we can see that there are some pretty logical patterns um, that we can, we can find when we're looking at these different gaps or these different portions that are coming off of the molecule. And it is possible to be able to use these gaps as a way of helping us understand the carbon skeleton of the molecule. However, that is pretty tedious analysis. In most situations, we don't need to rely on the mass spec to give us information about the carbon skeleton because we'll be able to get that information from other types of instrumentation like NMR. When you're in a situation where you do need to use this sort of analysis, um, this is just sort of a, a guideline of what you should be looking for. Keep in mind that all different types of fragmentations are possible. So if you saw a gap of 28, maybe that would correspond to a CH2CH2, something like that. 43 is also another common gap that corresponds to a propyl group, CH2CH2. CH3, and hopefully you just kind of get the idea, different combinations of carbons and hydrogens, which is typically what we're seeing in these molecules, gives rise to all of these different types of gaps, as well as all of these different sized fragments.